with the shoe. Shot clock is off. 13 seconds left. See that active 1 3 1 zone. Seven seconds left. Summers. Lucas, the jump shot. Got it! Three and a half seconds left. And a gutsy call, and I like it by Tom Izzo. Taking Kalen Lucas off the ball, letting him work or move without the basketball to get the catch and shoot opportunity. And once again, the story of the half, the headline is taking it into the seams or the teeth of the defense. The mid-range jump shot by Kalen Lucas. Second consecutive game, Dave. One against Minnesota, the three ball game decider, and here against Michigan in a robbery game. A big ticker likes to step up in crunch time. So Michigan State with a 57-56 lead. That's the 17th time the lead has changed hands in the game. And 13 times in this half. Now plenty of time still for Michigan to get a good look at the basket. Keep in mind, with three and a half, you can get three long dribbles. A quick player with skill should be able to advance the ball from rim to rim in four seconds. So they should get a shot inside of the three-point line at mid-range, and that's with the bounce. If they advance it with the pass, which is quicker than the bounce, they can get an even better look. So John Beeline drawing up right now an offensive set that will get the Wolverines a good look at the basket. Michigan State with fouls to burn. Only five team fouls. They can also burn that clock down. Well, and Michigan State going to extend defensively so they don't allow Michigan to roll the ball up the floor. A little chess match as we see the timeout after Coach Izzo sees the alignment. So one point game lab who do you expect is going to take that shot. Well I think ideally in this situation Dave you'd like to see it be Manny Harris but if he draws extra defenders you've got to go with the open man and that's basketball split second you have to read and react because it's a changing game. If you come in with a predetermined idea and don't have the ability to read and react now you force the action end up with a bad shot. Sometimes in this situation, it's a broken play on a long pass, a bounce of the ball that leads to an unexpected person getting the last shot. But Manny Harris would be ideal. Well, the lead keeps changing hands frenetically. Kalen Lucas just drilled that money two-point jump shot to get Michigan State the one-point lead, but maybe the hero will change hands, too. Keep in mind, Deshaun Sims a big target to throw to as well, like a tight end over the middle. Douglas has to get it in. He does for Sims. Two seconds left. Sims fouled by Green from behind. And again, they can continue to do that. 0.9 seconds left. Boy, the big one there, the judgment call, but was that foul intentional? Was he just going for the jersey or the shorts, or was he going after the ball? We understand they want to see the clock. Remember, for the longest time in this game, about seven minutes left in the first half, we lost one of the referees. We've been down to two. Take another look. Well, across the middles, we mentioned like the tight end. And Boy, going for the jersey and the shorts, a dangerous play in that situation. Now, they were going over there to check out the clock. They're going to put 1.5 seconds on the clock. Michigan State clinging to a one-point lead, fouling there to prevent the shot by Sims. This is why so many coaches fear intentionally fouling in these situations. Unless you practice and rehearse it on a daily basis, there clearly the grab of the jersey and shorts, which would be an intentional foul. Now a judgment by the officials to let it go, didn't want to determine the outcome of the game, which I think is wise. But it does speak to the danger in late game fouling situations. You need to go for the ball, but not the jersey or the shorts. Michigan calling a timeout here, and the last one for John Beeline. By the way, tip of the cap to Ed Corbett and Antonio Petty. It became a two man crew, and Jim Burr had to leave because of a back injury with about seven, seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. These two guys have done a terrific job. Well, they've been outstanding in terms of positioning, in terms of consistency and application of the rules, and working together as well as communicating with the participants, both the coaches. 
coaches and the players. Now, 1.5, Dave, still enough time to get a catch, square, and shoot, and even a quick catch, one bounce, and a shoot. The bounce makes it risky. Michigan ball on the sideline. Douglas will check it in with 1.5 seconds left. See if they go for a catch and shoot off the screen or throw it to the rim. There's uh, guarding the inbound over the top, and the catch off the window won't go by Sims. And Michigan State hangs on by their fingernails. Well, and well devised, a point blank shot. Can't draw it up any better. They just don't finish. The lob over the top from sideline out of bounds. And Deshaun Sims may have quick shot it. With 1.5, clock doesn't start until you catch it. He could have gathered and actually come down and went back up. But again, in the heat of competition, easier said than done. So the Spartans remain perfect in the Big Ten at 8 0. They're now 18 3. Sims had a chance at the buzzer. Just a direct pass over the top. And again, another hold of the jersey, this time by Darrell Summers. The no call and not a finish by Deshaun Sims. You know it's a rivalry game when everyone's holding on to each other's jerseys and shorts late in the game. You gotta love it. Big Ten style. They were hanging on to my jacket the last five minutes of that game. A nail biter. It was exciting, but more so certainly for the Spartans who win it 